The American Wild West is often depicted as an era dominated by cowboys and gunslingers, characterized by the pursuit of freedom, the westward expansion, the quest for gold, and the fight to protect newfound wealth from bank robbers. However, much of what we believe about the Old West is influenced more by romanticized portrayals than by historical reality. Figures like Buffalo Bill Cody played a significant role in shaping these myths, capitalizing on the rugged and adventurous image of the West. In truth, the actual Wild West was markedly different from these legends, offering a more nuanced and less glamorous reality. Number 10. The first gold rush was not in the Old West. One of the most iconic events in American Western history is the California Gold Rush of the 1840s and 1850s. This gold discovery ignited a massive movement of settlers heading west in search of fortune and opportunity. However, it's important to note that America's initial gold rush towns were established much earlier and were situated further east. The first significant discovery of gold in the United States occurred in 1799, when a 12-year-old boy named Conrad Reed found an 8-kilogram gold nugget while playing in a creek on his family's farm in North Carolina. Unaware of its true value, the Reed family used the hefty gold piece as a doorstop for several years. It wasn't until 1802 that they decided to take the nugget to a jeweler in Fayetteville, who purchased it for a mere $3.50. The family soon realized they had been swindled, recognizing the substantial worth of their discovery too late. Motivated by their loss, the Reed family began mining along the creek on their property. This marked the beginning of gold mining in the region. By the 1820s, extensive mining operations were well underway in Cabarrus County, North Carolina. The burgeoning gold rush attracted thousands of workers and entrepreneurs to the area. By 1832, the gold rush in North Carolina had employed over 25,000 people, making it one of the first major gold mining endeavors in the United States. This early gold rush significantly influenced local economies and set precedents for future mining operations across the country. The techniques and experiences from North Carolina's gold rush provided valuable lessons for subsequent gold discoveries, including those in California. Moreover, these early gold rush towns contributed to the broader narrative of American expansion and the relentless pursuit of wealth long before the more famous California gold rush came to define the era. Number 9. Bank robberies almost never happened. When historians examined bank robberies across 15 western states between 1859 and 1900, they were able to verify fewer than 10 incidents, including two by the infamous outlaws Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This data starkly contrasts with the prolific bank robbery scenes often depicted in Hollywood films. In reality, most banks in these western towns were founded by individuals who were already respected community members frequently the owners of general stores. These early bankers were trusted figures who had built solid reputations through their previous business dealings. When banks were eventually established, their locations were strategically chosen to deter potential robbers. They were typically situated in the heart of town, flanked by other stores, which provided natural surveillance and made unauthorized entry more challenging. Furthermore, the banks were equipped with iron safes, which added an extra layer of security. These safes were robust and difficult to crack, significantly reducing the success rate of any attempted robberies. The combination of strategic placement and advanced security measures meant that bank robberies were not as rampant as the popular Western genre suggests. The myth of the lawless Wild West, filled with frequent and daring bank heists, is largely a creation of Hollywood storytelling. The actual historical record shows that bank robberies were rare events, and the few that did occur were often the work of notorious criminals whose exploits were sensationalized. This discrepancy between fact and fiction highlights the importance of scrutinizing historical data to understand the true nature of life in the American West.
The romanticized vision of the Wild West overlooks the practical measures communities took to protect their assets and maintain order in their towns. Number 8. The Battle of the Alamo The heroic narrative of the Battle of the Alamo often portrays it as a fight by brave men seeking freedom for Texas. However, a critical aspect frequently omitted from this story is the significant role that slavery played in the conflict between Mexico and Texas. In 1829, Mexico abolished slavery, creating a major source of tension with the settlers in Texas, who had brought their enslaved people with them. As these settlers became increasingly uneasy, they turned to Stephen Austin for assurance regarding the future of slavery in Texas. Responding to their concerns, a provision was included in the state constitution explicitly prohibiting any external authority from emancipating slaves within Texas. When Mexican troops advanced into Texas, they carried orders to liberate any enslaved individuals they encountered. This directive alarmed the Texan slaveholders, who feared losing their enslaved laborers, especially as the cotton industry's profitability soared. The rising price of cotton made the institution of slavery even more economically critical to them, intensifying their desire for security over their slaveholding rights. This desire for certainty transformed into a push for independence from Mexico as they sought to ensure that their right to own slaves was permanently protected. Following the Battle of the Alamo, the slave population in Texas experienced a significant increase, doubling in size. This surge underscored the fact that the conflict was not merely about abstract ideals of freedom and independence, but was also deeply intertwined with the economic interests of slaveholders. The aftermath of the Alamo thus reveals a more complex and less glorified reality. The fight for Texas's independence was, in part, a fight to preserve and expand the institution of slavery. This perspective highlights how economic motivations, particularly those related to the lucrative cotton industry, played a crucial role in shaping the historical events of the Texas Revolution. It also reflects the broader context of slavery in America, where economic interests often drove political and military actions, influencing the course of history in profound ways. Number 7. Women Were Opening New Opportunities as westward expansion progressed, the influx of train travelers created a demand for dining establishments along the routes. Fred Harvey recognized this opportunity and established a chain of restaurants known as Harvey House. These establishments provided travelers with quality meals during the brief stops their trains made at depots. Initially, Harvey House restaurants were staffed by male waiters. However, after a violent altercation in one of his New Mexico locations, Fred Harvey reconsidered his staffing strategy. He decided to replace the male waiters with female servers, a bold and unconventional decision for that era. At first, the introduction of female waitstaff was met with skepticism and rumors. The women, derogatorily labeled as little more than prostitutes, faced significant social stigma. Despite these challenges, the first team of Harvey House waitresses quickly proved their worth through their efficiency and professionalism. Their exemplary service gradually shifted public perception. The success of these pioneering waitresses led Fred Harvey to exclusively hire women for all his restaurant staff positions. This move not only improved the service quality at Harvey Houses, but also played a role in altering societal norms. By providing respectable employment opportunities for women, Harvey helped to challenge and reduce the stigma associated with women working in public-facing roles. The Harvey House waitresses became known for their impeccable service, setting a new standard in the hospitality industry. This shift had broader implications, contributing to the evolving role of women in the workforce. Fred Harvey's innovative staffing decision thus had a lasting impact both on his business and on the social landscape of the time. The story of Harvey House illustrates how economic opportunities and social change can intersect, leading to transformative developments in both industry practices and societal attitudes. The success of Harvey House waitresses is a testament to the potential for progressive employment policies to drive positive change.
Number 6. The End of the Original Cowboy The 1870s marked the decline of the traditional cowboy, largely due to the invention of barbed wire. This innovation transformed the landscape by dividing vast open lands into fenced private properties, diminishing the need for cowboys in their historic role. Originally, cowboys were known as vaqueros, a term that denoted a social class rather than a profession. This class emerged in 1598 when Don Juan de Oñate launched a substantial venture to introduce herds of long-horned cattle and sheep into what is now the American West. This ambitious project involved herding approximately 7,000 animals into new territories, with vaqueros responsible for guiding the livestock over hundreds of miles to graze freely across expansive, unfenced ranges. For centuries, vaqueros and later cowboys maintained this nomadic lifestyle, moving with their herds across open plains. This way of life, however, began to vanish as the West was increasingly divided and fenced in the 1870s. The widespread adoption of barbed wire meant that vast tracts of land were now privately owned and enclosed, making it impractical for cowboys to continue their traditional practices of free-ranging livestock. As a result, the role of the cowboy evolved. The open-range system, which had defined the cowboy's work for generations, gave way to a more sedentary form of cattle management. Cowboys found themselves adapting to new roles that included tending to livestock within confined spaces, managing ranch operations, and ensuring the maintenance of these newly established boundaries. The end of the open range era brought significant changes not only to the cowboys' daily duties, but also to the cultural identity of the American West. The romantic image of the cowboy as a rugged, free-roaming herdsman began to fade, replaced by a more grounded reality shaped by the demands of a fenced and parcelized landscape. In a broader historical context, the introduction of barbed wire symbolizes the transition from a frontier society to one of regulated and structured land use. This shift underscores the impact of technological advancements on social structures and economic practices, illustrating how a single invention can precipitate profound changes in ways of life that had persisted for centuries. Number 5. The Pony Express was extremely short-lived. The Pony Express, formerly known as the Central Overland California and Pikes Peak Express, had a brief existence, operating for only 18 months before ceasing operations in October 1861 due to the advent of the telegraph. The service was expensive, costing around $5 per ounce to send mail, which meant it was primarily used for business and official communications rather than personal letters. Riders of the Pony Express were tasked with transporting mail over relatively short segments, typically about 32 kilometers, 20 miles each. These riders were often young boys, and some of the horses used were actually mules. Despite popular lore, the dramatic posters seeking orphans willing to risk their lives as riders likely never existed. No historical evidence of such advertisements has been found leading historians to believe they are a later embellishment of the Pony Express legend. The high cost and short-lived nature of the Pony Express can be attributed to the logistical and financial challenges of maintaining such a rapid mail delivery system across vast and often dangerous terrains. The service required a network of relay stations, fresh horses, and a constant supply of riders, which collectively drove up expenses. The introduction of the telegraph revolutionized communication by providing a faster, more reliable, and cost-effective method of sending messages across the continent. This technological advancement rendered the Pony Express obsolete almost overnight, as messages that once took days or weeks to deliver could now be transmitted in a matter of minutes. The Pony Express, despite its brief operation, has since become a symbol of American ingenuity and determination during the westward expansion. It represented a critical transitional period in communication technology and helped pave the way for more advanced methods. The romanticized image of the Pony Express rider, braving the elements and dangers of the frontier, endures in popular culture, 
even as historical scrutiny reveals a more nuanced reality. Number 4. The Original Cowboy Hat John B. Stetson hailed from a family of hat makers, and following a tuberculosis diagnosis, he moved west in the 1860s in search of a healthier climate. Settling in Missouri, Stetson began crafting what would become the original cowboy hat, known as the Boss of the Plains. This initial design differed significantly from the typical image of a cowboy hat. It featured a round brim and an uncreased crown, deviating from the creased and shaped styles we associate with cowboy hats today. Made from beaver fur, the Boss of the Plains was designed to be both lightweight and waterproof offering practical benefits for those living and working in the harsh conditions of the American West. As the boss of the plains gained popularity, wearers across different regions began to personalize their hats. These customizations included various creases and folds, which evolved into a symbolic language of sorts. The way a hat was shaped could indicate a person's social status, occupation, and even their geographic origin. Over time, these individualized styles became so prevalent that they influenced the standard design of cowboy hats. Recognizing the significance of these adaptations, Stetson eventually incorporated the five most popular crease styles into his official product line. This move not only standardized the variations, but also cemented the cowboy hat's place in Western culture. The transformation from the boss of the plains to the more familiar 10-gallon hat illustrates how practical needs and regional preferences can drive the evolution of a design. Stetson's innovation in hat design and his responsiveness to the preferences of his customers reflect broader themes in the history of the American West. The customization of the cowboy hat exemplifies the individuality and regional diversity of frontier life. Moreover, Stetson's success story underscores the impact of entrepreneurship and adaptability in shaping cultural icons. The cowboy hat's journey from a practical piece of headgear to a symbol of Western identity highlights the dynamic interplay between utility and style. It serves as a testament to how everyday objects can acquire deep cultural significance and become emblematic of broader historical narratives. Number 3. New Mexico was the site of a major Civil War battle. Discussions of America's Civil War typically focus on the conflict between the North and the South. However, in 1861, a significant event unfolded in the West involving Henry Hopkins Sibley. Sibley, a former U.S. Army officer, resigned his commission to join the Confederacy, where he was appointed as a colonel. Promoted to Brigadier General while in the Western Territories, Sibley aimed to secure these regions for the Confederates. The strategic importance of the West, particularly the Santa Fe Trail, cannot be overstated. This trade route facilitated the movement of goods worth millions of dollars and was a coveted prize for any controlling power. Following Texas's secession, Sibley led a force of 2,500 soldiers into New Mexico with the objective of capturing this crucial route for the Confederacy. Sibley initially achieved success at the Battle of Glorieta Pass, often referred to as the Gettysburg of the West. However, this victory was short-lived. Union soldiers from Colorado launched a surprise attack on Sibley's supply base, effectively crippling his campaign. Although the casualties from this assault were relatively minimal, the loss of supplies and resources proved devastating for the Confederate forces. This encounter, despite its significance, is not widely remembered in mainstream Civil War history. The defeat at Glorietta Pass marked the end of Confederate ambitions in the West, illustrating the broader challenges faced by the Confederacy in maintaining supply lines and securing distant territories. The failure of Sibley's campaign highlights the logistical difficulties and strategic missteps that plagued the Confederate war effort. It also underscores the interconnected nature of civil war battles across different regions, demonstrating that the outcome of the war was influenced by a complex web of engagements beyond the primary theaters of conflict. Understanding the events in New Mexico provides a more comprehensive view of the civil war.
revealing how regional battles played critical roles in shaping the broader conflict. Sibley's attempt to control the Santa Fe Trail and the subsequent Union counterattack at Glorieta Pass offer valuable insights into the military strategies, economic considerations, and territorial ambitions that define this tumultuous period in American history. Number 2. Tumbleweeds are not a native site. In virtually every Wild West movie, there's a scene featuring a tumbleweed rolling through a deserted town, adding to the desolate atmosphere. Yet surprisingly, tumbleweeds were not always a fixture of the Western landscape. In reality, these tumbleweeds are actually a plant known as Russian thistle, and their introduction to the United States is an intriguing tale. The story begins with a shipment of flaxseed sent to Scotland, South Dakota, which inadvertently carried Russian thistle seeds. Around 15 years later, these hardy plants had firmly established themselves across the western states, spreading from California all the way up into Canada. Russian thistle is a formidable adversary, capable of growing to the size of a small car and producing up to 250,000 seeds per plant. This prolific seed production, coupled with the plant's ability to thrive in arid conditions with minimal water, posed a significant challenge. By 1880, the Department of Agriculture had already taken notice of the invasive nature of tumbleweeds, recognizing the threat they posed to agricultural land and communities across the West. As tumbleweeds spread, they had the potential to overtake entire towns, driving residents from their homes and disrupting livelihoods. The rapid proliferation of tumbleweeds serves as a reminder of the unintended consequences of human activity on the environment. The accidental introduction of Russian thistle to the American West demonstrates how seemingly innocuous events can have far-reaching ecological impacts. The battle against tumbleweeds continues to this day, with efforts to control their spread and mitigate their effects on ecosystems and communities. The presence of tumbleweeds in Western films not only adds to the cinematic portrayal of the Wild West, but also serves as a reminder of the enduring struggle between humans and nature in the ever-changing landscape of the American frontier. Number 1. Native Americans did not always use all bison. Studies conducted by academic institutions such as Brown and Princeton shed light on historical land management practices in the American West. Prior to the arrival of settlers from the eastern United States, Indigenous peoples employed large-scale burning techniques to clear forests and shape the landscape to suit their needs. Similarly, Native American hunting methods, particularly those concerning buffalo, were also on a grand scale. One such method, known as box burning, involved setting fires around a herd of buffalo to corral them for slaughter. This technique was instrumental in facilitating the hunting of large numbers of buffalo efficiently. Another method, perhaps more notorious, was the buffalo jump. This terrifying practice entailed driving entire herds of buffalo off cliffs, resulting in mass casualties. Subsequently, hunters would descend to the base of the cliff to harvest choice cuts of meat and other valuable resources from the remains. These historical practices offer insights into the complex relationship between indigenous peoples and the land in the pre-colonial era. Far from being purely subsistence activities, these techniques demonstrate a sophisticated understanding of ecosystems and resource management. The use of controlled burning by indigenous communities contributed to the maintenance of open landscapes, which in turn supported diverse wildlife populations and facilitated hunting activities. Similarly, the buffalo jump method while brutal by modern standards, was a strategic means of procuring resources in an efficient manner. Understanding these historical practices is crucial for appreciating the intricate ecological and cultural dynamics of the American West. It challenges simplistic narratives of pristine wilderness and uncivilized peoples, highlighting the sophisticated land management strategies employed by indigenous communities long before the arrival of European settlers. As we debunked the top 10 misconceptions about the Old West, it's clear that separating fact from fiction 
reveals a rich and complex tapestry of history. By shedding light on these misconceptions, we gain a deeper understanding of the realities that shaped the American frontier. If you enjoyed learning about the truths behind the myths of the Old West, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into history, culture, and beyond. Don't miss out on our upcoming videos where we continue to unravel the mysteries of the past. Subscribe now and join us on this enlightening journey through time.